Are they rolling? Tape is, tape is rolling. Okay. Okay. Can you give us your name and your role in this project? My name is Artie Ortiz, and I'm the project director of the San Juan Bilingual Program, and I keep management of the program, plus try to int int integrate the program in with a regular BI day school. Okay. Next. My name is Wilford Garcia, and I'm the Tewa language teacher supervisor, plus I also teach the fifth and sixth grade, and I'm also a parent. Okay, what's the goal of this program and who is it designed to serve? The it's the program serves the community plus the children as well. The program serves the kindergarten on through the sixth grade and then it serves the community as well also. And our goal is to teach the children how to read and write the, the Tewa language. Yeah, that's your basic goal. What would you say uh, and some additional goals of the program are in, in line, say, of what, what, what's been said before, like preserving the culture of the tribe and things like that? Yeah, preserving the culture and plus getting the kids interested more in, into the Pueblo uh, government and what, are, what have you not in the, in the Pueblo. Okay. Wilfred, what about you? Uh, I think that... Uh, we're, we're kind of uh, going around one of the goals that I think is really important in order to have this project going just like we have it going and to make it a better project. And that goal, I think, is to have our native language teachers certified to where they could teach anywhere in the state of New Mexico. And that's a very important goal that we've been overlooking. And uh, hopefully that if things go right, we can have our own native language teacher certified to even teach in the public school system with no problem at all. You might be interested uh, to know that the Yakima have just had one of their teachers certified by the state of Washington. So we can, if you like, we can give you the name of the people to write to up there and find out what they had to go through. It may be slightly different in the state of New Mexico, but probably some of the requirements sure. are the same. But they worked for a long time to get her certified, but now she is. And they had a big celebration when she was certified. Well, in relation to that, you know, we are presently working on such a thing as that of getting the, our native language teacher certified. In fact, already myself and the governor and his lieutenant governors attended a workshop yesterday in, at the State Department of Education in Santa Fe for this particular purpose. We want to be heard. Artie, how is the program organized and how is it funded? We're primarily funded through Title IV Part B out of Washington. And so we're organized to where I'm the director and I keep control of the overall management of the program while the teachers uh, go into the classroom and teach the, the table language in the classroom. And how does the program operate? Or maybe maybe I should ask Wilfred exactly uh, exactly how does the program operate? How you know say on a day to day basis? Okay, uh, our program operates on a on a daily basis. We we come in at eight o'clock and then uh, usually we go through our schedule. And I believe Marie, the kindergarten instructor, is the first one who who goes into her classroom, say at nine o'clock, and she's there till ten or ten thirty. I'm not too sure. I think it's 10:30, and then uh, at 9:15, Bertha and myself we go into our classrooms from 9:15 until well, I go into that classroom from 9:15 till 11:25, and at this time from 9:15 till 10:05, uh, I teach my first group of students, and then from 10:15 till 10:50. Uh, I teach my second group of students, and then from 10.50 to 11.25 is my last group of students. And each one of us go in this kind of a, a manner. Uh, Gertrude and uh, uh, Francis also go in, sometimes around 10.05, into their classrooms. 
How many children are included in each group that you teach? Uh, in the groups that I teach personally, I have uh, eight, eight students in one group. I have uh, five students in another group. And then I have seven students in one group. Uh, and the reason for this is at the same time that I'm teaching my group, my first group, the basics teacher, Mr. Coleman, is teaching one group of students and the teacher eight is teaching one group of students and so we have three groups going on at the same time. Do you think this is a good way to do it or would you rather have all the, all the students at one time? I believe this is a good way to teach because you have three students, I mean uh, three teachers involved with three groups of students and once one teacher is teaching uh, say language arts and then uh, I know what to go from there and if the other te uh, teacher eight is teaching reading then I know uh, if she's missing uh, some of the students are not getting the words right, I try to help them in that area also. And you help them by working with them in right. the Right. Yes. Uh -huh. So really, the language program is incorporated into a lot of the other subject matter in the school. Right. Could you, could you just say that, basically? Uh, well, yes, it is. We, we are, like, another area that I work with is if the students are having a little problem with the math area, I bring that into my Tewa portion of the class also. And this way, I'm helping the students to, to do their math, plus uh, their spellings, spelling words that need to be taken care of. I do that also. Okay. Arnie, why is it important to use culturally derived or culturally relevant materials in this program rather than say just writing things on the board well we have people from the community coming to the to the school here and they teach um, cultural things or native crafts to the kids like basket weaving and all that sort of stuff and this things are important to to the uh, person who does the native craft because he has to go out or she has to go out into the around the reservation to pick some of this stuff up to to do the demonstrations do they sometimes take the kids out with them say to gather uh, reeds or to gather uh, mud for pots or something yes it's not um, constantly you know the the person doing the demonstration but it's the teacher who who brings the demonstrator into that takes them out to the into the field and to pick out whatever they they're, they're going to use in the demonstrations. I could uh, say something on that. Uh, last year we brought in Mr. Trujillo who who does uh, willow baskets, and uh, before we my students did the willow baskets, I took my students on a field trip to the river, and we gathered our willows. And then when we got them here, we, uh, with Mr. Trujillo's assistance, they sized up the willows so they could start making their willow baskets. So uh, we do take them out to, to get their materials. Another time I remember was a couple of years ago when we actually first started. Uh, we took the students out to the uh, mountains or the hill area here to gather cow patties for firing of pottery, and they enjoyed that also. How do you think that, uh, say, having people come in and demonstrate traditional crafts, and, and uh, not only crafts, but the skills of surviving in this environment, planting and grinding wheat and doing these other things, how do you think that helps a child of Native American heritage to get along better, not only within the Pueblo, but in the outside world as well? Well, I think the way I see it is, uh, if a child knew more about his or her culture, it's going to help him or her get along better with the, the other society because he knows how to tell the other, uh, such as uh, maybe an Anglo student was to ask one of our students, about how they go about uh, making pottery. And if he knew what he was talking about, it would help him more, and it would help the other student to understand what he was talking about. Marty, did you have anything to say to that? Well, I would say that the 
Native American child would be more appreciative to, to Mother Nature and what that's surrounding him too because of the things that we're surviving through or the people used to, the old people that we used to have around here. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that, uh, that one of the big problems the Anglos have is that they don't know how to coexist in their environment, that they're always ripping it off. Yeah, they're, they're always, always taking things from They're always them. destroying what they could make use of where the Native American child could um, save it and put it to use in some other fashion or manner. Okay. What do you think, Artie, that the effect has been so far on the children who have been in this program? Move a little closer to Wilford, if you will. Uh, That's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, what do you think the effect has been on the children? Well, let's say not only on the children, but on the parents as well. Parents of the children. Well, on the children's part, I think it has been a great effect because the, the like Wilford has been saying, that they've been re reinforcing what the regular teacher has been doing in the classroom through our language and the, the our bilingual program here is uh, experiencing the, the gain of some of the children that are picking up in the national norms also like in reading math or some of those things. They're picking up, they're improving somewhat. And do you think that that this is a direct result of, say, their interest in, in school in general picking up because they're more interested in the bilingual program? Yes, I would say that. Say, say that to me, then. You say that that's why you think it is. That's why I think it is. No, I mean, I'm just saying the oh. reason, one of the reasons that I think one of the reasons that I think uh, the national norms are going up is because the kids are really interested in the bilingual program and it transfers off into their other subjects. Well, that's the reason why I think the bilingual program has been a big uh, impression on the people, especially in the students, because of the improvement on their, on their tests, because we give tests, uh, a pre- and post-tests, and on the post-tests we've seen a significant gain on the, on the children's part. Okay, we're going to have a change tape for a second. Okay. Take well, there's a book because we can pick up even the whistle. I believe uh, the effects that our project has, has had on the uh, students and the parents is, you know, it's really there. It's obvi obvious that we have had, this program has had some effect on them because uh, I can, you know, talk about my family and I don't mind talking about my family because uh, my son when he was going to Head Start preschool he was he was really uh, getting ready to you know come into the our project our school because he saw some of my students and our students right here at San Juan take part in our native dances and also uh, other things that he was looking forward to and so now he's in the in the, our school and he he is really anxious to get started with some of the things and uh, the Christmas play that we had even for him to be a little lamb was something because he enjoyed that he told his grandmothers both the one in Santa Clara and one here in San Juan that uh, he was a lamb for our Christmas program, and that really had something on him. And to top it off, we were also getting ready for our Christmas uh, Tewa Mass, and I brought him and my wife to practice, and he learned the Tewa songs right along with his mother. And now even my wife is getting on me to say that we should have uh, Christmas, uh, not Christmas, but Tewa Carol practice to where we could sing more in our church and uh, that shows you know from my own family and I know that it shows the same with a lot of other families so uh, my own own way of putting it is uh, we have had you know this program has a great effect on the, the community as a whole we've talked about the importance of using culturally relevant materials in teaching uh, bilingual programs let's turn that around and talk for a minute about the necessity for teaching 
the Tewa language, say here, or the Yakima language in, in Yakima, when you're trying to teach cultural programs, why is it important to use the language? Well, the way I see it is, without a language, uh, I don't think there's much you could do about your culture because uh, I'll go back to one of the com national conferences that we, we've had. Uh, our program has been involved with the Native American Bilingual Education Conference. I'll go back to uh, the, the last uh, the conference before last to Canada, uh, Alberta, Canada. And there, one of the elders gave a talk, and I heard him, and he said that... Uh, what would you do if your native language were to die? I listened to him, and he said that for if your native language were to die, you would have no other source to have your language alive. But whereas you, if the Eng English language was to die in the United States, you could always go to Europe or England and learn it all over again. So that's why I think that your own mother tongue is really important because if you do not have a mother tongue, you cannot talk about other portions of your culture area. So to me, your language is just as important or more important than your culture. Okay. Did you have any thoughts about that? Mm. Okay. I'll go back to Artie now. I mean, how has the program been accepted by the people of the Pueblo? Well, I think we've been saying all uh, how well the, the program has been accepted through all these questions we've been answering. Mm -hmm. but Just give me a sort of a summary of how you feel about, you know, you're the director of the program, mm -hmm. and do you get, say, comments from people? Do you get questions from people? Yeah, well, we've, the comments that we get is put into the proposal to, to, to show Washington how much per, com participation we have in the community, how strong the community is towards the the program and those comments have been really great because that that's what's really helping us get the funds from Washington because our without the coming to participation we've had I don't think the program would have even existed or the kids wouldn't even be that interested in the program at all I would like to say a little bit more on that uh, I believe one real good reason that the community had you know, has accepted our project is mainly because the staff members, we as staff members ourselves, have shown that we not only are interested for the students and for the community, but uh, overall we have even taken part in our Native heritage. We've done uh, our own dances. Uh, take, for instance, just this past weekend. Uh, we were honoring our new tribal governor and his council. Artie and myself here did the buffalo dance and in honor of the new officials. And we've done not only this type of a dance, but we've done other dances that we're, we're trying to tell the people that we also care to keep this alive ourselves. So therefore, it gives more meaning to the students if they see their teachers themselves doing such a thing. Wilfred, would you like to see the program continued and perhaps expanded into upper level grades? And if so, why do you think it would be a good thing? Definitely, I like to have our project going on for as long as possible. And if, if we were to really go on, I would stay here until probably I go of old age, you know. Uh, I, then again, I would also like to see this project go on, not maybe this project, but uh, through this project, maybe other people get in, would get involved and they would maybe hopefully go to the junior high, high school, and maybe even to the college level to where we could teach the native language. Not, not necessarily Tewa, but uh, if it's Tewa, that's fine, but if we could get any native languages taught, that would be just as fine. What kind of benefits do you think that extending this program into junior high and high school might have for the students themselves? Well, I think that uh, one of the other staff members had hit on 
on that earlier, and I, I believe that if we were to continue this project to the uh, junior high and high school level, some of our native students would really benefit from it through tutoring in the Tewa language for other subjects because without this, we might have, you know, dropouts. I don't know. I really can't say, but I think it would be of benefit to them. Would you like to see it continued and perhaps expanded? Yes, definitely. I would like to see the program continue on through forever, I guess, and continue through on through the junior high school and the high school level. And to see this program here as a training center, as a media center for the other, uh, like, or trains of other teachers that will be teaching in junior high and high school level for for their teachers to train them here at this program here and to, you know, uh, have the teacher certified through us and to whatnot. Neither one of you have anything, any other thoughts about the program or any areas that we haven't covered, but you think, think about it from a minute, from the standpoint of, to just talk about the kinds of considerations that one ought to, ought to take under consideration when they get into a project like this. Well, I think that uh, if there are other groups that would like to start a language project or bicultural, bilingual education, I believe that uh, they should get those interested people around the community to get together and form a committee who will push such a, a project in order to get it funded, whether it's federal funds, local funds, uh, there's also private foundations that do like to fund educational programs, and uh, you have non-LEAA programs that uh, could also be of assistance to such groups if they do so desire to, to do this. And uh, again, if the program gets funded one way or another, whether it's private foundation, federal funds, or uh, maybe a big company just for tax write-off, uh, what they ought to do is, you know, get again get interested people right from their their community to be the teachers such as we have here and then dedicated people at that because it takes a lot of work and it's uh, a lot of times that you have to stay overtime and you do it because you're interested in such a, a thing in order to keep it going so uh, probably uh, they would have to do like we we did here start from scratch no materials uh, go over the sounds, even though if you're a native speaker, go over the sound system and then discover what kinds of sounds you have and then go on to think what kind of uh, an, an alphabet system you would like to devise, whether you would like to use the same English alphabet system or uh, out of that maybe put together your own orthography to where you can be able to write your own language. So uh, really there's a lot of work involved. The only thing I can say is t for the people who has a bilingual bicultural program to be dedicated and to be interested in what the children are learning in their school. Okay, any other thoughts or ideas that you'd like to? Well, gosh, there, there are a lot of things that, you know, we like to say, but uh, sometimes you do forget on a situation like this, but... Uh, uh, I would like to mention that uh, our project from here at San Juan Pueblo, we were involved in one of the great big national conferences, and that was last May in Phoenix, Arizona. And again, this project right here at San Juan, we, our staff hosted the national conference, and everybody did a wonderful job. We took uh, our students, our parents, our governor, lieutenant governor, and uh, resource people right from the community, and we presented our own project. And uh, one of the elders, she demonstrated uh, pottery making. And before we knew it, uh, the people that were watching all started making pottery with her. And the same goes with Mr. Trujillo. We took him to do uh, basket, willow baskets. And the people just sat right around him. They watched him. and. 
this one girl, you know, it takes quite a while to make a willow basket. And this one girl from Alaska sat by him until he finished that first basket that he started. And when he finished it, because he noticed that she was there during the whole time, he gave her the willow basket and that girl started to cry. And she thanked him. And, uh, you know, you couldn't ask for anything better than that. And something like that, it gets you because they're interested. So I, I guess we could really mention more, but like I said, you, sometimes you forget. And okay.